Well, hello everybody. It's Brother Todd with your Victory Minute, and I hope you guys and gals out there are all having a great day, and hopefully you are either going to have, you're having, or you've had a great Thanksgiving holiday. I don't know when you're going to see this particular uh, uh, video, this particular Victory Minute, uh, but I want to talk to you today about one of the things we get from frankly, Thanksgiving holiday. It's one of the principles in God's word that it's one of the things that we can instill in our life that helps us overcome the things in our life. God has given us things to overcome things. And if you've been watching these last few victory minutes over the last month or so, you know that's what we've been kind of talking about, okay? If you had never got to see these things, uh, go to Victory Church there in Scurry, Texas website. Uh, you can find them archived. You dig around on YouTube. We don't have a real big YouTube following, but they're there. And you can um, and you can follow them there. Okay, so uh, dealing with things, we have spiritual things, we have emotional slash mental things, we have physical things, we have relationship things, and when you deal with all of those and you put them all together in this soup that we're living in, we're calling our life, um, they're just there and they have to be dealt with. And the great thing God does for us is He gives us things. A lot of them in his word, teaches us about them in his word that we can apply. They're things that we can do to overcome the things that we're dealing with. And one of those things is, uh, it's very fitting uh, for this particular uh, victory minute and the time of year that we're in here at Thanksgiving, is an attitude of gratitude. How can I have a heart full of thanks? Um, Paul talked in Ephesians about in all things give thanks. Well, it's easy to give thanks for things that let's say we would consider good, uh, things that are easy, things that we think are, you know, that are a, a big blessing, right? We got something to eat and those kinds of things. But the reality is he said in all things, even in the difficulties that come alive, come along in life, even the hindrances that we deal with, the griefs that we walk in, uh, the relationship situ situations that we're dealing with, this whole reality of life, the Bible teaches us that there is a power that helps us to walk in thanksgiving. There's a, a passage of scripture that, that produces, if, we, if you follow what, what the word of God is saying to us, it walks us into this reality of being in partnership with God, co-laboring together with God. You know, the Bible says, if Christ is for us, who can be against us? Uh, he who is, uh, you know, who's in us is greater than he who's in the world. All of these are realities that we realize if we're really walking with Christ, we can overcome the whatever circumstances and situations, the things that life brings at us. Okay. One of the key set of verses, couple of verses that you really need to know, uh, is in Philippians chapter four, verses six and seven, very famous verses. A lot of people know them. You probably know them inside and out, probably quote them. And I'll guarantee you something you can do. You can quote it better than me. I'm going to tell you something, you know, every now and then in life <laughs> or in, in the scriptures or wherever, there are verses of scripture that I cannot quote properly. I mean, I, I'll get around to the main parts in there, but I will stick them in all kinds of places. So right over there, okay, I'm a full disclosure here. There's a cheat sheet, okay? And it's got those, it's got that verse, how those verses, how they're actually written out, because I guarantee you I'll mess it up. So if you see me looking over there, well, you and old brother Todd's got a little mental problem there, okay? I tried to, I get a little dyslexic with this verse. So What's he talking about? He, he's running along there and he comes up on this statement. He says, be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about anything. I'm gonna tell you what, how in the world can you live in that world, right? Where you're not in any way spiritually, mentally overwhelmed, right? How do, you, how do you not get overwhelmed dealing with a husband? How do you not get overwhelmed dealing with your kids, your wife, your friends? How do you not get overwhelmed when you're in grief, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's a big statement, all right? Jesus looked at a bunch of disciples whose hearts were broken, didn't understand anything that was really going on. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. Well, okay. Then he said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. And he's letting us know he's enough. And the end of that verse, verse seven, ends with through Christ Jesus. So how do I get from, I don't need to worry about anything to, to I am walking in partnership with the Lord? Well, I'm going to cheat. You look over there and let me start off with the verse, right? He says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, right? 
in everything, and this is where I always mess it with, I always put the Thanksgiving part first, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, right? Let your requests be made known unto God. And, and it says that he will give us the peace, right? How does he put it? Because I always mess it up. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep your, or guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus, okay? Think about what he said. He said, don't be anxious for anything, okay? In the situations that we're dealing with, but pray. We've already talked about one, prayer being one of the things we can do to overcome the things in our life. Pray and we have trouble with it. We have trouble doing it. We have trouble walking in it. We have, tr we have trouble when we need to be prompted in it. And he tags a word, two words there, with thanksgiving. And I want to tell you something. The with thanksgiving there that he's talking about provides perspective. Hear me. When your mind is on what you have and not what you don't have, even in grief, what you've had, as opposed to living maybe with, without somebody that you love now, but would you trade the love and the life that you had with them for, for and there being grief and there being pain as opposed to never having them in your life? Okay. With thanksgiving gives us the perspective of being able to, even though we're, you know, no one, I, I never agree with God on the timing of somebody passing away. I always want them to have more time, right? So even, even in, in that reality, we, 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 I mean, especially if it's somebody we've lost that's younger, those kinds of things, how do we, how do we, how are we prompted to pray so that we're not overwhelmed? We're not anxious. Okay. Well, when we're thankful about what we had in them and what we have in them. You know, one of the ways I know I didn't evolve from a monkey is I love people that aren't here anymore. My love for them has never changed, okay? That's one of the capacities we have as, as being made in the image and likeness of God, okay? Brings us into another dimension of life, okay? We're far more than third dimensional beings. But anyway, I won't get into all that. So, so this, this Thanksgiving gives me perspective. And when I can look at things through what I have in them, what I've had in them, then, then I, my mind is on what I have and not what I don't have. You go way back, first page of your Bible, right? First couple pages of your Bible. Eve's kicking around in the Garden of Eden. She's got everything except one thing, right? And no devil's group is great about getting your mind on what you don't have, get, get your mind off of what you do have and putting it on what you don't have. And she became convinced that her way to be more fulfilled was to have the very thing that when she got it, wrecked everything. It wrecked everything. And she, and she lost her perspective. She lost her perspective. I think she lost her perspective and Adam lost his patience, right? I don't know. I don't know how, how she was talking to him about taking a bite. But anyway, another sermon for another day. And what happened was, is, is she lost perspective. And when we lose perspective and we just are wallowing in the loss, it's real easy to get really honestly without just trying to sound hard. We get caught in a certain amount of self-pity, right? And we throw that pity party. And the thing about a pity party is ain't nobody invited but us, right? <laughs> Only one person gets to come to a pity party. And so you lose perspective. But when you have the perspective of thanksgiving in all things, Lord, I'm going to look for what, where and how I've been blessed in this, what it produces it, that perspective prompts prayer, right? Anxious for nothing, in all things praying, with thanksgiving. What is it that pr prompts that, okay? It prompts us towards the communion, okay? And as we pray in God's will and as we have that fellowship, he, he talks about it providing peace. And a, how does he do it? How much is it? How's it going to work? Don't have no clue. Surpasses understanding. But I'm just telling you guys, I've been doing this a long time. God keeps his word. I'm telling you right now, there is no way I would spend over 30 years of my life preaching a gospel that I have, have not seen effect in. Okay? Right now, as I'm making this broadcast, I am I'm bookending funerals. Okay? I do them every week. Every week. Every week. 
okay? I've got, I had one yesterday. I'm going to have one on Saturday, and I don't know if the week's still early, okay? You just don't know, okay? But I've seen God give peace in impossible situations because he keeps his word. And one of the things I can do to overcome the things that would overwhelm me is if I will be thankful, I will have perspective. And when I go to pray, and not only should I pray, but I'll know how to pray. Because I can boldly approach the throne of grace, but it is a throne. And so I need to, to know how. And thanksgiving keeps us in in balance in our prayer. And the word of God says that the Lord will produce peace. And again, in verse seven, I always misquote it. And it will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It'll keep you in spirit. That's probably most likely what he's talking about in heart and in our minds, okay? The spirit and the soul, it's right? Because the flesh is what it is. It hadn't, it hadn't been glorified yet but it can be crucified and it can be controlled by our hearts and our minds. I'm justified heart, a justified spirit. I'm a saved person, right? And God is sanctifying my mind, transforming my thinking, right? And as he ministers to us and he gives us peace, what does it say? He says it's through Christ Jesus. So it's beyond us and it's in God's power that he has promised to work in us. Because the Bible says the power working in me and you as believers is the same power that the Lord used to raise Christ, as the Father called, as it were, from the grave. That the Spirit of God that's dwelling us with that same life-giving power, that overcoming power, if you're following me, okay? God says that he'll produce it. But and again, that, these are big verses. We could talk about them all day long. But I just want you to run back to that, that early thought with thanksgiving. This week, think about, even if you're dealing with loss, Thanksgiving can be a lonely time. All you got to do is have somebody not there that, that you want there, should be there, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, even like, even like uh, for me, um, okay, so my old man died here a couple weeks ago, okay? And... Uh, you know, there's a part of me realizes that come Thanksgiving day that he's not going to come walking in there in a white t-shirt. He always wore, after he retired, it's all he ever wore was a white t-shirt, right? <laughs> just, I mean, just ghost white, a uh, white t-shirt and some kind of old ball cap, work cap, old school style, trucker style, right? Real tall. And uh, him coming in, grinning at me and aggravating me about what I'm messing up or whatever. And me looking over at him going, hey, old man, I can't believe he's able to walk in the, in the house, right? Somebody have to help you. Just messing with each other. Okay, that's not going to be there. But I've got so much, right? I'm 55-year-old man. My old man just now died, right? A lot of people lost their kids. They are there before they was five. Right, So there's so much to be thankful for. The lessons I learned from him, the times that we had to get, you know, like he told me right there before he died, I'm going to miss you. Amen. I'm going to miss him, miss him now. But that's because there's love. And, and when my mind is there, when I'm thinking of that perspective of him not being so sick and him hurting so bad, but God having him in his promises, then I can be thankful. I can be thankful for where he is. I can be thankful for where I'm going. I can be thankful for what I've been. And then as I pray, I'm praying from that attitude as I'm praying for help and grief and those kinds of things, my brothers, my family, then what do I do? Then we're praying from a higher plane and you need perspective. You've got to have perspective. Thanksgiving gives you a high perspective to where you see things as they are and not lost down here in the trees, so to speak, like I'm in right now. You, I fly, I always amaze me, I fly a drone up out of here a lot and, and there's a field over there we plow and, and I'll take that drone, fly over and see how everything's growing and that kind of thing and the perspective that you get. And you see that what you're dealing with that seems so big is small and uh, that you're not lost. You can be up all up in the trees, but you just got, got to get that way and you're going to be out. All of those kinds of things. It's perspective. The perspective of thanksgiving. Try try that this week. Really talk to God about giving you an attitude of gratitude. And when you see your kids, when you're talking to your family, when you're whatever it is, you're dealing with your work, you're looking at your paycheck, whatever. Look at it from a perspective of thanksgiving and see if it doesn't produce prayer that's going to provide peace that is going to incorporate you walking with the Lord and you're going to walk powerfully 
and you're going to overcome the things that are trying to overwhelm you. Be anxious for nothing. Hope that you have a good week. Hope you had, haven't, or will have a great Thanksgiving. See y'all later. Bye-bye.